And the Central Ohio, I'm Tim Weather Impact Meteorologist Michael Barons. And I'm meteorologist Aaron White. And yeah. it's another, uh, it's good Wednesday. The rain's finally getting <laughs> out of here. Yeah, finally. That, <laughs> finally. I mean, it has been such a rainy couple days. I mean, we got under that low pressure system last week yeah. and it just didn't go anywhere. Yeah, just stuck and there for days. We had a lot of rainfall, yeah. so it's going to be nice to finally dry out and the <laughs> forecast is looking good aside from maybe a couple days. Yeah, we got a few rain chances in there, but those are pretty small compared to what came through and you know all the moisture that was around it kicked us off to a foggy morning out there. Let's first take a look at that fog. This was a video this morning taken from 270 and 315 North. You can see that fog get pretty yeah. dense in some spots. I mean, those lights almost doing more harm than good when you get the fog out there like that. Yeah, and I'm sure some places, especially some of those lower lying areas, had it even more yeah. dense uh, visibility. Probably was uh, down to under half a mile in some places. Yeah, we, but we, we got down even under a quarter in some okay, of our northern yeah. counties this morning. But you know, the good news is the warm air this afternoon has started to burn that off, and we won't have to deal with that through the afternoon. I'll show you the time lapse out there from our tower camera this morning. You can see those banks of fog kind of roll across the city, and then once the sun uh, got going here, the fog mostly went away, but we still had that mix of sun and clouds out there and that's going to be kind of the case as we work our way through the day today. Your main weather impact 70s this afternoon. That's pretty nice. Not all sunshine, not all clouds. That mix will be in place today and then as we head toward tomorrow, Unfortunately, I hope you didn't put the rain gear too far away because you're going to be needing it back. Showers come back into the picture as we head into Thursday. It'll be another well day to keep the umbrella on standby, but I think this time it's going to just be rain. We're not going to be dealing with the storms across the region. Your temperatures out there this morning got as low as the upper 40s and low 50s. That's part of the reason we saw that fog form. Temperatures dropping down to that dew point. Not a lot of wind out there. That's kind of the perfect recipe to see fog, especially especially all the moisture down at ground level from the recent rain. And again, thankfully the sun has burnt that off. 70 is your high this afternoon. We're calling 73 out there. That's even with wind coming out of the north. So not so bad out there as we head through this afternoon. Again, though, that changes as we get to tomorrow. It's not a huge chance for rain. It's not going to rain all day. It's not going to rain in the same spot all day, but pretty much anywhere has a chance for a scattered shower, not just throughout uh, tomorrow morning, but through the afternoon and into the evening as well. We're going to be watching more moisture come our way from the south. That's going to start to lift in as early as sunrise for some of our counties out there tomorrow. So I want to go ahead and show you things hour by hour. We'll start here this evening. Cloud cover sticks around central Ohio, partly to mostly cloudy skies as we head into tonight. We're still dry up until about say 4 or 5 a.m. Uh, into your day Thursday. We see that rain though start to lift in as we get towards sunrise. Scattered showers, heavier rain chance will be on the southern counties. You might get a rumble of thunder or two in areas to the south, but for the most part, the rest of us, we're just looking at scattered showers. They continue on through the midday. They work their way into the afternoon, even into the evening commute. Still could be dealing with a little bit of scattered rainfall. Once we get past sundown tomorrow, we should start to push this rain out. The cloud Cloud cover starts to push out along with it, and we should be back to dry weather by the time we head into Friday. A fairly sunny end to your week. Temperatures will be cool. We're talking 60s for highs. It's going to be comfortable to get out uh, and really do anything that you need to get done outside. If you got the yard work, maybe put it off one more day. Things won't be too wet as we head past Thursday uh, with those temperatures and sunshine uh, in the 60s on Friday. As far as the rest of this afternoon goes, again, our high temperatures make their way up into the 70s coming out of the noon hour in the 60s. We'll kind of stay in the 70s right up until about sundown tonight. Those temperatures will eventually fall back back to around where they were this morning. We're dropping back down into the low 50s by early Thursday. That rainfall that comes through not uh, got a ton of moisture with it. So in terms of what we pick up of new accumulation, likely somewhere between about a tenth and maybe about as high as three to four tenths on the high end of rainfall. By the time the system pushes out into Friday, it's not going to be a soaking rainfall. So hopefully this really shouldn't do much to exacerbate any of those problems we've had some flooding across portions of the state heading into your Mother's Day weekend. Things get even better Saturday. Perfect weather out there, mostly sunny up into the 70s. We repeat that for Mother's Day. Really not a good excuse not to do things with mom on Mother's Day because we are going to talk perfect weather for brunch, for lunch and for dinner afternoon too.
any time going to be a good time to get out and enjoy that weather this weekend. We get back up into the 80s as we head toward next Monday and Tuesday. Monday right now looking dry, but by next Tuesday, we could see our next little chance for rain creep in. Right now, we haven't really um, put too much emphasis on that in the forecast, but yeah. you know, you get warm, you get humid. Sure. Here it comes again. Yeah, those uh, little pop up thunderstorms in the <laughs> afternoon. But hey, it's at least uh, nice to see the drier conditions, more yeah. sunshine, and finally getting back to some warmer weather. I mean, the uh, we barely got through the 50s yesterday with all the rain. Oh, yeah. And nice to see some 70s and, of course, you know, near 80 next week. Yeah, and I mean, the 70s this afternoon will feel good after that, yeah. that cool weather kind of sat in place. I mean, we got kind of spoiled with the latter half of spring temperatures sure. sticking around a lot. Yep. But uh, it's not uncommon to get some of those cool blasts this time of year. Yeah, definitely not. And, you know, a little bit too much rain. And, you know, now we're starting to see that uh, drying period and definitely yeah. some good news. And we definitely need that drying period. So we're drying out today here in our part of the state. And, well, thankfully, we didn't see much flooding. But leftover areas of flooding are still impacting several spots, including uh, this one here. Authorities in northwest Ohio. We're stressing the importance of not driving through floodwaters. That guy's doing there. You don't want to do that. Uh, that video was taken earlier this week as parts of Toledo were dealing with flooding. Many drivers got stuck and needed to be towed out of high waters. One man working for DoorDash says he needed to be rescued. I started realizing how deep it was and I was going to try to back out of it. And then before I knew it, I let off the gas and that's when it wouldn't go no more. So I just killed it out. Officials say to always be cautious when you see those flood waters in the rain. Uh, if there's water on the road, the saying, turn around, don't drown. That is exact type of situation yeah. why you got to do that. You don't want to get stuck in those flood waters. Yeah, definitely not. And I mean, we've seen so much rain here uh, this spring. We saw a lot of rain last spring as well with just, you know, rounds yeah. and rounds of showers and storms. And unfortunately, at least last year, you know, it brought a lot of severe weather in terms of, you know, all the uh, tornadoes that we had. So I want to go back actually one year ago today, we actually had a lot of severe weather across the uh, parts of the Midwest in terms of uh, severe weather that brought hail. It brought even some tornadoes. This is May 7th of 2024. And if you remember last year, we had a lot of severe weather again, record setting number of tornadoes for the state of Ohio, 74 tornadoes and a lot of them actually happened one year ago today. You'll see all those red icons there indicating where we had a lot of tornadoes in the western part of the state, but there were some confirmed tornadoes a little bit further to the east of Columbus, in addition to some high winds and even some hail that did uh, make its way through the state of Ohio. So here's a look at the stats. We had 14 confirmed tornadoes last year today. Six of them were EF zero. Six of them were a little bit stronger EF ones and two actually were EF two tornadoes with uh, some damage that was reported again. Most of those tornadoes on the western part of Ohio. So a rather significant day when you look back at 2024 and how much severe weather we really had throughout the year, especially, you know, it started early, you know, yeah. through February, March and April and into May, of course, and just seeing how many tornadoes there were. Thankfully, this year, not as active. Yeah, I was going to say, you kind of got your trial by fire last week having to cover some of those tornado warnings here. Yeah. I mean, thankfully, it's been quieter this year. I, I got here about a year ago, and we just were tornado after tornado after tornado. Yeah, that's what it seemed like. It just, just didn't end last year. Sure, and then, I mean, eventually, obviously, after we had some more severe weather in May, I know eventually translated into drought conditions. Yeah through the summertime and that's what we'll have to kind of watch and see. Jerry and I were talking about this uh, yesterday with how much rain we've already seen this spring. Are we going to see sort of a repeat? Yeah, obviously there's some factors that really go into that. It's not always going to be the case, but still something we'll have to watch the trend. Yeah, certainly. I mean, the good news is at least we, we have gotten this period of rain. We got rid of last year's drought. Yeah, so we're not we're not stacking drought on drought. Sure. So even if we get dry, we've got some reserves to get through. Yeah, which is good. Yeah, absolutely. And now to some environmental news and update we're following from last week on a solar project out in Licking County. It's going to be allowed to move forward. That's the decision from the Ohio Supreme Court. It upheld the Ohio Power Sitting Board's approval of the Harvey Silver Solar Project. It came after a citizen led group uh, opposed uh, that project's decision there. Uh, that will now be allowed to be built on 2600 acres in Hartford and Bennington townships. And keeping with our climate news, let's go ahead and take a look at some news from around the nation. 
Here's Jesse Mitchell with CBS News Climate Watch. Keeping an eye on the climate, here's what you need to know. A hundred days in and President Trump is undoing years of climate policy fast. His first few months have been marked by a rapid rollback of environmental protections with a clear shift toward fossil fuels and away from clean energy. He's also implementing major staffing and budget cuts at agencies that handle climate science and policy and shutting down offices focused on environmental justice. According to new data from the organization Climate Power, President Trump's policies have put 95 clean energy projects at risk of being delayed or canceled, representing more than $71 billion in investment that have generated more than 62,000 jobs. Should more projects be terminated, as many as 399,000 jobs in the clean energy sector could be at risk that have come online since August of 2022. And finally, an all-electric Chevy Silverado truck just saved the day after a destructive storm knocked out power to nearly 37,000 customers around State College, Pennsylvania. A Chevy dealership kept the lights on and even brewed coffee using the battery from an electric pickup truck right off the showroom floor. That's your Climate Watch. For the latest on climate and environmental news, go to cbsnews.com and follow us on Instagram at CBS News Planet. I'm Jesse Mitchell in New York. And, you know, those cuts that they're talking about, unfortunately, they're not just coming to climate agencies. Yeah. They've been coming across the board, including to the National Weather Service. And, and new information shows that the National Weather Service is actually now in worse shape than what well, was previously known. Due to a combination of layoffs, early retirements, and pre-existing vacancies, most divisions of the agency are now affected by shortages. Ivan Rodriguez reports on the possible impact this could have as we head into hurricane season. Andy Hazelton is a hurricane hunter who was working out of the National Hurricane Center in Miami. We're not really doing policy for the most part. We're just, you know, especially the Weather Service, just trying to get this life-saving information out there. He's flown into the eye of the storm countless times, including Hurricanes Helene, Dorian, and Ian. You basically fly through the storm three to four times, and then the forecasters are getting that data in real time. They're using that for their advisories to tell people, hey, this is where the storm is, this is how strong it is. But now he's out of that job. He was one of hundreds of employees at the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, or NOAA, whose roles were terminated as part of the Trump administration's efforts to slim down the federal government. They're already understaffed, and you know, this is just going to be an even further blow on top of that. The National Weather Service is headed into hurricane season with 30 of its 122 weather forecast offices lacking their most experienced official, known as the meteorologist in charge. These include offices covering New York City, Cleveland, Houston, and Tampa. It's a job that gets very, very busy whenever there's active weather, and you're responsible for keeping an eye on everything. When you don't have that position filled, you're basically asking other members of the management team to step up and do those things. And when the when the weather is getting very active, it's it's very hard to keep up with that. Further cuts to NOAA are in the works, though the NWS may not suffer the brunt of that next round, according to internal federal documents. In Atlanta, I'm Ivan Rodriguez reporting. And finally today, let's check out some new video into us here at 10 TV. Three people were unfortunately injured after a possible lightning strike hit a home in Texas. You see it right there. That lightning strike immediately catching that house on fire Monday afternoon, the fire department said. Uh, Cooleyville Fire Department said that three adult victims were found in transported hospital for minor injuries. The official cause of the fire is under investigation, but looking at that video. Yeah, I was going to say, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think much more yeah. investigation needs to be done. Yeah, I, I saw this uh, yesterday and I was yeah. just like watching it because you see the lightning strike. So there it goes all again, of a sudden, you see it, boom. Right there. Instantly and then smoke. Smoke, yeah. yeah. Just like sometimes wild. you'll see lightning hit a structure and like it kind of smolders for a bit and then like yep. then it catches on fire. This was it's like striking a can of gasoline with a match. Yeah. And sometimes you'll see that with like trees too. Like it'll hit the tree and like yeah. go all the way down and then it'll catch on fire too. But yeah, I mean the smoke, I mean that Thick was smoke. very, very immediately. Quick. Yeah. Just yeah. wild video. Indeed. Glad to know their injuries were only minor yeah. from that, because that could certainly have been a lot worse. Uh, and transitioning to a completely different season, but believe yeah. it or not, we, we still have to talk about it. Yeah, we still <laughs> got to talk about snow for parts of the country. This was up in the Rockies. 
Just uh, this week, west of Denver, more than 10 to 20 inches were expected over the highest elevations with that gradient kind of sharply dipping as he went down slope. Spring storm brought enough snow to bring out the snow plows on parts of I-70. Okay. Same interstate that comes through yeah. Ohio to help keep those roadways open. Yeah, Look at that snowy wild. video there. And I mean, you know, Colorado, they get obviously in the hell higher elevations, they get a lot of snow, but yeah. still seeing it in May. Mm, yeah, I not said, ideal. <laughs> so, some of this storm that they had, I mean, it brought snow down. I, I think some of the reports were down as far as like 7,000 feet, which sure. for, for Rocky elevate, Rocky Mountain elevation, that's not that high. I mean, we don't really have a good perspective here in, in flat Ohio for what 7,000 yeah. feet is. I mean, even if you go down to like the, the Appalachians, we don't have much perspective for that. But, eh, you know, snow time. Yeah. Doesn't end. Hey, it's still there. <laughs> and I mean, some of that snow is going to stick around even into the summer months. Of course, uh, up yeah. around like Pikes Peak and the high, high elevations. But... Yeah, still you not know, what you want to see this time of year when we're talking about 70s and 80s in the forecast. No, but I mean, <laughs> it is good to get some of that snow in there because I mean, that can help to alleviate drought conditions yeah. potentially heading into the uh, the drier months ahead. Sure. So yeah, you can take it when you can get it, yeah. I guess. Yep, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of what you can get it, this is when you can get the 10 Weather Impact Show, but this has come to an end for today. Of course, we'll have more online at 10tv.com. And coming up later tonight, Chief Meteorologist Jerry Martz, he'll be breaking down that rain chance for tomorrow. Until then, a great afternoon.